listen and for the year one slide you looked at last year, obviously we've got um, slightly different exams to tell you about. So go through the structure, um, what they'll look like, which won't be a surprise, you're not new anymore, um, and what if something goes wrong. So all of my all of the SLS exams will be on Moodle, um, thus you'll be very familiar with them. You may hear others in the university talk about doing their exams in the alternative exams portal or the AEP. Um, similarly, you may hear there are very few, but um, using the Warwick Assessment System or WAS. Do not be concerned about this. Um, typically, it's the case that you, um, some, someone will hear that other students are using AEP and you've never even heard of it. That's a good reason. We choose not to use it because it's rubbish. AEP doesn't have a lot of balls. Um, we might as well just do it in the middle. So don't worry about these things. If you do a module that is external to SLS, which will only be if you're over capping, or for the GSD and life science students, maybe your GSD exams, if you have them, I don't know. But if you're doing anything that's external to SLS, it's probably in the AEP, and it's nothing to do with us, so make sure you do more. You are aware of how um, the exam is being delivered by any other department you're doing a module with. All exams are open book, um, as you can use to all your tests and exams. Um, Timetable. So the university's summer exam window is the 15th of May to the 22nd of June. This is a six week window, it's very large. Um, the slides will be available, they're due to be released on Moodle um, at a uh, half hour after this, so at half past one, so you, you can follow the link if you want. Um, that's the official window of time, um, and the official release of the timetable is the week commencing the 24th of April, which I think is the first week of term. So this is what the, it's no longer called the exam office, but the university's exam office sets out. Um, but at SLS, we set our own exam timetable, which you may remember from last year, um, which causes us an administrative burden. It is more work. Um, the reason that we do this, though, is so that you can have the timetable earlier. Um, we think it is unacceptable that you have to we'll wait as late as the 24th of April to have the exam timetable. Um, so we do it, um, and actually you'll get it by the end of term two, which is only next week, so kind of five, six weeks earlier than the university will be releasing an exam timetable, which probably doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Everyone wants to know, perhaps it'll help you prepare if you're doing revision over Easter. Um, so we've already got draft version, um, it'll be out sometime between now and the end of It will not use the full six weeks. Um, that's not this exam window, this is not realistic. Um, it's likely to be over two or three weeks, something like that. Um, it will be provisional. Um, that's, it just has to be, because we're jumping the gun of what the university wants us to do. Um, and it is possible that we would have to make changes um, once the university released their own. However, um, I highly doubt it. So as much as I'm not promising you that it um, won't change, I, I have to tell you it's provisional. I don't expect as we do in year one with our chemistry module and in year three where there's other um, external modules as well. So I would expect it not to change. Not a promise. Someone will tell me that I, I said it wouldn't change, but I didn't. Okay, structure. <coughs> so first off, um, they'll all either start at half past nine or two o'clock. Um, that's British summer time. I don't care if you've changed the time zone. That's up to you. These are the times they will start. And that's not a choice in the timetable that will tell you whether it starts at half past nine or whether it starts at two o'clock. These are dates set by the university. All of the exams are 90 minutes. Um, and so that's, that's up to you to manage. If you start late, then you, you've just lost some time. So don't do that. Make sure you're ready to go as soon as you can access the access. Um, which is the same as in the old days. We got you to an example. Someone says go. And that's the point at which it starts. So you can be there then. Um, so 90 minutes is the, is the standard amount of time. There will be students that have reasonable adjustments that recommend extra time. Um, if that's so, that will already be added. Um, so there won't be any need to kind of raise that. Um, what you will be able to do in advance <coughs> of the exams is go into the page where you know, the start button is, and it will tell you how long you have. So if you want to check that in advance, you can. However, please don't do that kind of months in advance, because it's just the step of adding the extra time hasn't been done yet. So 
it's only if at the last minute it's not there and you would raise it, please don't do it too far in advance. Each exam um, is made up of two sections. All of the exams total 70 marks. Um, they all have a section A and a section B. Um, and these are split either 35, 35, 30, 40, or 40, 30, so across A and B. So they're all kind of roughly half and half. Um, all of the exams have part A, which are short answer questions. All of those questions are worth at least three marks. And the point here being that there are no one or two mark answers, which in the old days would have just been, what is such and such, define such and such. And those things are not good exam questions. So we've done away with those. Um, they're all at least three marks each. <coughs> part D, um, questions are far more varied. For those that are coming late, there are unsurprisingly lots of seats near the bottom, but there's lots of seats everywhere. Um, part D. Part D will vary amongst the different exams on the different modules. So they will either be essay questions or mini essay questions, or they will be data led questions, or they will be vignette driven questions. So these are our section B options, um, and they will differ between the different modules. And I'll explain a bit more about B in a moment. On the module pages, it will say, um, just under the assessment section, it will say that there's a 30 second module assessment, so you've done most of those by now, and then there's a 70 percent exams, and the part B of the 70 percent exam is, and what type it is. So that's actually been there all year. Um, there are a few modules that have updated that from previous years. Um, so the important uh, point about that is that when you're looking at the past papers, the part B might have changed. Um, but you can find the, the, uh, an accurate statement of what the part B type will be on the Moodle page. There are past papers on the UG guide, so just go to the assessment section and you see past papers. So part A, um, all short answers. So these are, every exam will have um, uh, short answer questions. They've got the screen mark minimum. You type your answers directly into a free text box. Um, there's nothing to stop you writing whatever you want in there. There's no word in it. Um, but you've also probably seen these kind of text boxes in Moodle before. Question order is randomized. So that's the same as the U1 exam that you did as well. Uh, so not everyone will receive the questions in the same order. So all the part A's, they'll be together and they will be randomized, and then you move on to the part B, and those will be randomized. So the part A's and B's won't be mixed up. Answer them only with text. Um, if you put any images in, they will not be saved. The text box in Moodle won't save them. Even though you might be able to put them in, they will be lost. And for the last few years, there's always been someone afterwards that says, but I put this in, why didn't I get a mark? Um, and it's unfortunate because they've missed out, but it's also their own fault because they didn't follow the instructions. So please don't put anything up in the text. There'll be um, questions that I present you with things that are not text, figs and so on, um, but that's what you can put back, it's just next. <coughs> so part B. Um, for those that have essays, you will need to choose one of three. Um, and again, you need to write them directly into the text box. There's no document uploads, so don't write in a separate document and then try and upload it. Don't, you can't add any figures or tables. Um, it can only be text, so it is more limited than um, uh, an essay that you would write under different um, uh, circumstances. For those that have mini essays, um, these are just smaller, and you'll need to do two of them. Um, and you'll pick two from Four. They are, of course, half the marks of the full essays. Um, therefore, they're half the size, and you're only going to spend half the amount of time on them. So if we assume that all the um, exams are a 35, 35 split, and they're all 90 minutes, that means you've got 45 minutes to do part B. And it's up to you what you do with the time, but in terms of uh, a good way to do it would be 45 minutes on part B. You're either going to spend 45 minutes writing one essay, or 22 and a half writing two. So it gives you an idea of they're not like the kind of essay you did over Christmas, for example, that your tutors sent. The expectations are not quite the same. Where there are data-led questions, <coughs> um, these can take a, a couple of different forms. So either the data-led question presents you with some results to analyze. 
So these might be figures from papers, for example. Um, and then the assessment is based on your understanding of those results that you're looking at. So, um, so the data that you are looking at. The alternative is that you are presented with um, the raw data for you to do something with. So typically to make some calculations with. Um, and the best way to get a flavor of what kind of data and questions you might accept is, is to look at the past papers. Vignette questions. So these are um, scenario or case-based. So there's some kind of blurb that tells you about some scenario, and then there's a, a series of questions on that one topic. So these have, are used quite extensively in, say, medical science, which you're not doing, obviously, but in medical science, where it presents a case that might actually present a patient is, has all these things, and you're going to do some of the questions are about diagnosing. So that's kind of their origin. Of course, they're not used like that in all our questions because um, we're doing life sciences, so the, the subjects vary a bit. But that's the point. Here's some context, here's a scenario, and the specific questions on that. For data led and vignette, they don't have that three mark minimum that the um, uh, Section A question would do. Um, they can, there's a lot of variety in the questions that might be asked from data led or vignette led questions. <coughs> Um, varied question types is a good thing. So hopefully across your modules you actually have quite a good spread of the different section Bs and their kind of <coughs> assessment. Um, and these types of questions are a, a really good assessment of your understanding rather than just recall. Because being open book, of course, you can just look up whatever you need. So if it's just recall, that's not, um, that's not a very good assessment. Again, any of these types of questions that enter LF206 in particular, so um, molecular cell biology, this, the section B is data led questions. The difference, the reason I'm pointing out, uh, talking about LF206, is that some of the content for those data led questions will be released before the exam. So, as a bottom here, it has to be confirmed because I haven't got the time for the actual exam yet. Um, but what will be released is um, all the all the background that you need to answer the section B questions. This is to make sure, because they're quite lengthy, so you get a few extra hours to have thinking about what this means before you then ask the questions about it in the exam. So the point is that the exam time is used for you to demonstrate your understanding, answer the questions. It's not time spent on just um, uh, taking that information in. So we give you the time before the exam to take that information in, and in the exam, ask the questions demonstrate your understanding. So the times for this will be confirmed. Um, this is the only uh, exam that is doing this. There are other exams with data-led questions, but the, the, the kind of backgroundy bits for these questions in LF206 is uh, of a sufficient length that we don't need to use up your exam time just by reading. Um, so a few more specifics on the other types of questions. So when you're writing um, uh, essay questions, don't write an abstract, we're not expecting an abstract. Um, you won't be able to use figures or tables. Uh, and if you were, you'd probably spend far too much. Given the amount of time you have to write them, it would take far too long to print them anyway. And you're not expected to reference either, so you're only writing them in kind of 40 minutes. Um, however, even though you can't do those things, which we would expect from an essay in, different, uh, in a different scenario, we still expect it to have the others, uh, other, other elements that an essay should have, the same overall structure. So it needs some kind of introduction, but then it has the main kind of detail in the middle, it needs to have some kind of conclusion, and it still needs to have an appropriate order of content. So it's not just the smattering of facts. For it to be an essay, it needs to have this kind of structure, it needs to have some kind of narrative. Now, these are typically, what well, they are, always a bit more raw than if you spent a couple of weeks working on one you submit for a tutorial. Um, we appreciate that, but it still needs to be an essay, and without these things, it won't be an essay. There are no word limits. <coughs> so you need to write what is relevant and what makes a good essay as much as you can in the time that you have available. This naturally limits how much a student can write in that time. Um, don't be, um, I don't think there is any um, use in you considering have I written enough, because it's not about quantity, 
It's whether you said the things that you need to say, or said the things that make it a good answer to the essay question. So, marks on overall quality, because especially by being an open book, you have the choice of writing absolutely everything you could ever think of that you can find in the slides and on Google about that subject. But if you do that, it won't be a good essay, even if all the right stuff is in there, but you've just got lots of other filler. That means the overall quality of the essay So if you've got good stuff, it's surrounded by a load of nonsense because you're just spamming us with everything you can find. It's not a good essay. It's not going to get a good mark. Um, and this is something that has become necessary to point out in our new era of, um, of open book exams, which of course have only been around since about 10 years because of COVID. Um, in that, for every question, you, if you, can, you can probably go find something and you can drop it in. That won't make it a good answer. Um, so overall quality of, the, quality of the answer is important, not just if the right points are there. <coughs> um, so what will they look like? This won't come as a surprise. They're just going to look like quizzes in, um, in Moodle. And you did MT last year by doing um, MCO and uh, PNM. So they're going to look the same, except instead of five choices to um, choose from, you're just going to have a free text box. So there's a question at the top. Um, it tells you on the left-hand side how many marks it's worth. It'll probably say that at the end of the question as well, so you see that in two places. Um, it tells you how much time is left. You can now get around the questions if you um, so want. You write your answer in here. You can do whatever formatting of the text that you want. But almost all the questions, no formatting of the text, of course, will actually make any difference. So I think you're all going to be um, familiar with this. So there's not a lot more to say on this. Random order reminder, you can go back by navigating around here, um, and all the question types will look like this. So when, uh, the short answers, the data, the essays, they're going to look the same. Um, it's just how, how many words are used to, to describe the question up here, that's the only possible difference. So the meaning of open book, um, now this page basically is the same as I would have shown you last year. Um, there's a, a website here from the um, Academic Development Center at the university, uh, now, this was written in response to things first moving online in 2020, before we were here. <coughs> and so it does refer to 2020 exams, but ignore that, it's irrelevant. There are some sections there on preparing and what to do on the day that are just about doing open book exams. Now, open book in general means, of course, that you just have access to your resources. You still need to work on it alone. Um, open book doesn't mean there's another person in the book that you can talk to, i.e. your mate. Um, it just means you are able to look up resources. And you can use um, whatever information resources you want. Um, but, um, again, another message that's been really important for us to make over the last few years is that being open book is a different challenge. It's not a substitute for something that you may have done previously. So it's not a substitute for revision, and it's certainly not a substitute for understanding. It's a different challenge. Over the years, we've learned to write questions that are more appropriate for open book. And so, if you if you go into the exam not knowing how to, not knowing the subject, um, the open book nature of it won't save you. So you still need to do the preparation, be a good student, learn the content, do your revision, and when you um, have the exam, when you're doing the exam, you won't have to answer it. And of course, you won't have time to look up all of your questions. So it's it's there as a backup. Um, the open book nature, um, it just won't be possible for you to look up everything. So the best way um, uh, to be prepared is for you to know the material. However, we cannot watch or control what you access, um, nor would we want to, that would be a nightmare. Um, so you can, you can look up whatever it is that you need to, it's your own time that you will need to manage. Um, given all of this, we can still detect plagiarism. Um, now, 
for the most, most of you, this will never be a problem. You are not going to plagiarize, uh, but there is an inherent temptation to do so when it's open book because you have access to so much, or well, you have access to everything. Um, we can still detect it, <coughs> so don't do it. That should be fairly obvious. No plagiarism, please. Um, if it is detected, it will be investigated as per the regulation 11 on academic integrity and so on and so forth. Um, you can end up with a zero for the exam or worse. So this is the map again. Um, now, open book is a good way to assess your understanding. So as much as we move to open book exams because we have to, really, that makes for better exams. There's no reason you shouldn't look things up. It is a more authentic assessment because in reality, once you finish doing your exams after your degree, no one's going to tell you you can't look things up anymore. Um, and of course, that's what anyone in any job does. They look things up. Uh, the important thing is that they understand. So if you look things up and you don't understand, you're not going to get much further along with it. So um, it is more authentic. It's more like the way you're going to work for the rest of your life. Um, it's a good way to assess your understanding rather than just recall. What I should have done is add should have done is add another slide to follow on from the subject of plagiarism, but I've got. Um, but I will add that slide, and then the slides can go on Google, and you can have a look after it if you want. But the extra slide needs to be on artificial intelligence. So you probably all have heard of uh, ChatGTT. This is the artificial intelligence program that has changed everything over the last few months. Um, it's not the only one. The reason it's made such a big difference, though, is how well it works and how accessible it is. Using artificial intelligence to complete any assessment, including exams, is academic misconduct. And so we would, we would be following the process set out in Regulation 11 on academic integrity. Um, in terms of detection, that relies on us suspecting it, um, and then it would be investigated. Now, unlike Turn It In, which shows us whether you've plagiarized or not, um, we don't have a report to go on. So the most likely route, if we suspect the use of artificial intelligence to complete your assessment, is for us to violate you. This is in the regulation as well. Um, it's one of the steps we can take as part of the investigation. A viva, viva voce is Latin, it basically means oral exam. So if you're suspected to be a viva, we'd ask you to explain answers, answer the question again, that kind of thing, seeing if you really know it. Because if you do, then it's likely you wrote it, and if you don't, then it's likely that you did not. Um, so we will still, I mean, we have to, it's for the benefit of everyone, is to not allow answers to be, um, uh, assessments to be completed by academic integrity. It will do no good. And if the person next to you does it, that does you no good either, because we have the integrity of our degrees to protect integrity of the degrees that you will one day be awarded. And if people go, oh, I had, they had a really bad reputation for students and teaching. Like, you don't need that, okay? So there is still a process for us, um, the same process as for plagiarism, all academic misconduct for us to follow. If you think, well, I don't care about all that, anyway, I'm gonna do it. Um, the other thing that we found out is that it doesn't answer our exam questions very well. Because we've tried, and it's not very good. What it does do is write really well, better than most of you probably better than me, as in there are no spelling mistakes, there are no grammatical errors. It's quite convincing. It doesn't really, it, it doesn't understand. It's a language model, a language system. It finds relevant bits of information, sticks it all together, makes sure the language is correct. It's not doing understanding, and we're writing questions of such a form that require you to understand. So when we've tried, ChatGPT fails our user exams. So it's if you don't care about the whole integrity side, you probably care about the fact that you don't want to know the exam. I'll stick in a slide with all of those things, um, so it will be available on Moodle from now to the end of time. Progression. <coughs> to get into year three, uh, whether you're year three B our normal year three or going on placement, whatever it is, you need to score 40% overall across all of your modules. 
I passed at least 90 credits worth of modules. So those of you doing 120, you need to pass at least 90 to progress. If you meet these two basic criteria, you can progress to year three, even if you do have some failed modules. Unlike year one, there are no modules that you need to pass. So you can pass any 90 credits and progress to year three. In reality, that means there are, you can get away with failing two modules. Don't recommend it, but if you do, and you pass the others, you can progress. So you can, you can fail, uh, fail core modules and progress. If you uh, don't fail modules, whether you've met 90 credits or not, there will be recess further test attempts in uh, whichever you, you are awarded in September. That's the next uh, assessment exam period. <coughs> So this would be the case if you met, say you passed all but one, you've got one failed module, um, and you're allowed to progress, you've met the criteria to progress, you can still do that reset in September, so remedy the failure of that one module. Um, and of course, if you, but that's an optional reset, it's up to you if you want to reset, you've already met the criteria to progress. If you've not passed the 90 credits, then the resets you have in September are not optional. You will need to do them if you wish to. Um, now, any problems, um, then it's the same old process. So, basic problems with exam, contact the senior student team um, to discuss whatever it is that's gone on. And what, what your approach to it, what you might do, will also depend on, on where you are. If it's before the exams, during the exams, after the exams, whatever. So, <coughs> and that's why anything of this nature needs an individualized conversation. <coughs> Next up, so the information on mitigating circumstances is available all the time on the undergraduate student guide. The mitigating circumstances policy is a university policy, so we are bound, um, bound by it. Um, now, if you want the mitigating circumstances panel to consider your circumstances, then you need to submit a request. Um, you do this via tabula. <laughs> the deadline for the submissions is actually very late, so the submissions are only mid sex. 29th of June this year, you will have finished your exams uh, quite a bit before this. Uh, it's just uh, the, the timing of all of our exam boards and the circumstances panels mean that we can give you until the 29th of exam to get anything submitted. Mitigating circumstances panels consider the mitigation that you have submitted and make a recommendation to the exam board over what might be done with it. What they cannot do is alter any marks. So if you failed and you have missed sex, that doesn't mean we can take the mark away. That is your mark. Um, nor can it remove them from academic <coughs> records. So the marks that you receive will go on your academic record and stay there forever. Um, if you failed um, and you have missed sex, the obvious thing is that that can lead to a further first attempt of the exam. So you do the exam again in September, and it is not capped. So that becomes your new mark, and will replace that old mark. There are other rec there are lots of recommendations that mitigating circumstances panel can make, just not this. Um, if you have passed but have missed circs, then there's nothing we can do at that time. What we need to do is wait until the end of your degree and see if your mitigating circumstances at the time um, have had an effect on the overall outcome. So nothing is awarded until the end of your degree. So mid-certs in the meantime are used for um, kind of lower level things like they, their release can be a further first attempt. Um, but in terms of effect on the overall degree, we need to wait to see what happens. We can only do that at the end of your degree. <coughs> now, if it's actually during the exam that something goes wrong, then you need to get in touch. Um, so the ESS office is probably the first place, um, first port to call because they will be able to direct either your um, your message or direct you directly to the right place. So uh, SOS.UG, that's the right place to go. You can contact me. You can contact Alex. Alex is not the senior tutor. I'm going to hear Ashley, so I will fix that. I'm going to hear is the UTC senior tutor. Alex is the year three senior tutor. Um, or actually any one of the senior tutor team from the hero is not available. Um, so that's assuming something's gone wrong during the exam. What you'll also then need to do, though, is gather some evidence of what has gone wrong. So if it's health, 
and you need to go against some kind of medical certificate. So go to the GP. And the most important thing is that you receive medical attention for whatever's gone wrong. Secondly, it would be good to get some evidence so we can take that into account. Um, it's not just GPs, there's other ways to gather evidence. So I've got um, the example of counseling service up here and so on. <coughs> if something goes wrong during an exam that you, um, you passed it anyway, um, there will be no further first attempt. If you pass, it cannot be re attempted. So this is where, you know, let's say you scraped through with 40% because something went terribly wrong, you were throwing up all the time. Um, then we could only consider the effect of that on your overall degree at the end. Now, deferring exams. <coughs> deferring is useful in a very specific scenario that you know in advance that you won't be able to do them, or your ability to do them will be impaired. So it's difficult to come up with examples for this because it's so individual. But let's just say you need an operation, you've been waiting months for it, you finally get the date, and it's during the exams, or maybe it's just before the exams, and you won't be recovered in time. This is something you know is coming, and you won't be able to attempt to them. So this is when deferral is useful. Typically, it's still health, of course. We don't know until it happens, but it's just where something is known to fall in advance. If you think you need to defer, um, please discuss it with the senior tutor um, because actually they will need to put through the recommendation of deferral. Um, and there's no real um, barrier to say, that there's not, we're not really interested in saying no to deferral if you feel like you need to, you need to. But we do still need some evidence of the circumstance that require you to defer. So if it is that, um, um, that uh, surgery that you need, then the letter that says you're doing surgery on such and such would be the perfect piece of evidence. Deferral means all of the exams though. So deferral is saying you're not fit to do the exams at this time, we pick all of them up and put them in September, and you can't do some in the summer and some in September. If you defer, so you only do the exams for the first time in September, if something then goes wrong, you don't pass, especially if you don't progress, then your next opportunity to do the resist is the summer afterwards. And that won't be at the end of your third year. You won't be entering your third year until you have passed. So ideally, of course, if you, um, you pass them all the first time, this might be a problem. But it does mean you won't know until the end of September whether you can progress to year three or not. Uh, last word on deferral is that it's rarely the best option, unless you have that very specific, you know, the, the um, union operation type of uh, example. Otherwise, it's, it's not normally the best option. So if you think it might be, definitely get in touch to discuss. <coughs> Results, all marks go through the exam boards, which will confirm them, ratify them. Um, the exam board is a kind of official university process. All marks until the exam board are provisional, and that actually stands for the marks you receive throughout the year. Every piece of work you've done this year and you've had a mark back for, those are provisional marks. They are ratified by the exam board. That does mean they are not confirmed. Um, in reality, they, they, don't, they, they very rarely ever need to change. Like it's extremely rare, and nothing has gone wrong in the year two this academic year. So I wouldn't expect them to change, but you just should know that they are provisional. Marks and decisions released via tabular on the 20th of July. Um, this is a university control process. We don't do it. Um, that is the date they have set. I appreciate that's quite late. I would like for it to be earlier too, um, but unfortunately it isn't. Um, so you'll see them on time below where I'll show you all your marks um, and your decision. So the decision is the decision of the exam board. The, the one that most of you are going to get is just progress to year three. That's the most common exam board decision. <coughs> Another possibility is uh, that you can progress to year three and you have optional resits or optional further first attempts. So this is the case that you've met the criteria to progress, but you have some fails and you can address them in September if you wish. There will, in that case, there will be a process for confirming whether you want to do those September attempts or not. If that is the uh, situation, I always say yes. I don't see why you wouldn't attempt them again, give you the chance to remedy that failure, boost your overall. 
progress, progressive optional resets, then it could be that um, a decision without progression. So that you must take resets, or you must take further first attempts in September, listing which those are, in order to progress to year, um, to year three. It's possible that, um, I guess the most drastic example of decision is that you are required to withdraw. Um, this is extremely rare in a year two board in the summer, because at that point, if you fail things, you can still have the resets in the September. <coughs> it's possible in the September, if you've run out of opportunities, it's obviously still a rare event. The only way I could think that you would be required to withdraw in the summer uh, as a year two is that you've failed the tutorial program and you failed all the other modules. In that case, you can resit the other modules, but you haven't got any mitigation, so they're all going to be capped at 40. But you can't resit the tutorials, it's the only one that you can't resit. And so when everything else is 40, and your tutorials are still a fair mark, your overall mark is still going to be less than 40 if you do September resits. This, is, this doesn't happen, this is extremely rare. It's the only way, though, that you could be required to withdraw in the summer because it would be pointless for you to do those resets. Now, so your marks will be released, marks and decisions released to you on Tabula, um, and then ultimately they go on your higher uh, education academic, uh, sorry, higher education achievement report to your here. Um, again, that is not, um, not something that we control. It's not even a university platform. It's run by something called Grand Intel. I think most, multiple universities use it. I'm sure some of you will have been on and had a look before. It is your transcript, it's your academic record. That gets updated in the summer, typically kind of August time. On the day of release, your tutor um, will hopefully be available to discuss results if you want to discuss with them. Um, if not, there will be an alternative person that you can talk to um, if you need to. Now, typically, these discussions are when something hasn't gone well, hasn't gone as you hope, and then you might want to seek confirmation from your tutor. However, assuming everything has gone swimmingly well, I can tell you that your tutors will also be very glad to hear from you, and you say, oh, I got these marks, I'm really pleased. Um, just because they're busy. Uh, uh, the tutors will be pleased for you, they'll be proud of you, they'll give you a pat on the back. It's nice to hear. For my tutees in the audience, of which I spotted one or two, um, please let me know that you've done well, because on results day, I hear from all the unhappy people. So um, if I could hear from some happy people, not the rest of you, I would get too many emails, but my tutees, um, that would be nice. Exam stress. So I, again, these are the things I told you last year. Um, it's not meant to be easy. Um, it is meant to be challenging. And if it wasn't challenging, it wouldn't be worth doing. You got into a good university, you're doing a good course, um, it needs to be a challenge, else everyone could just be now their degree, right? What's the point of that? Um, so it needs to be challenging, and when things are challenging, they are naturally stressful. And stress is a perfectly natural response as well. What's important is how, of course, you manage your stress. Believe me, it's far more stressful when you get a career. Um, so what you'll need to do is you'll just need to focus and you'll need to look after yourself. So focus on your studies. You've got a lot of time actually between lectures ending next week and doing your exams, all of which you need to plan, you need to focus, and you need to look after yourself. The basic thing is looking after yourself. Get enough sleep, eat properly, get fresh air. All of those things means that you mean that you will feel better mentally and physically, and you will work better. Um, this stress is just, is just life. So I said it's closest to the real world of work, but it is just life. Um, however, should something go wrong, you, you, know, you lose control of your, your stress, or there's physical, or mental illness, whatever, it sucks. <coughs> Some resources, again, things I've pointed out to you in the past. So well-being support services, um, does its use, usual one-to-one -one stuff, so you may have mental health support, counselling, all that kind of stuff. So all of that's there, which some of you already know about, but they also have lots of resources that are more kind of self-help, so you can just follow this link to see that. Um, and they cover lots of things, There's, these are just examples, anxiety, managing of caffeine intake, concentration, bone mood, sleep, vice spot, worry, all of these things that are just for you to have a look at and see if you gain anything from. Um, 
And as ever with these kind of resources, you have nothing to lose by having a look. So um, unless you're incredibly relaxed about how it's all going, just have a look. The library has courses as well. These are, of course, more academic. Um, so on things like referencing, avoiding plagiarism, um, and mindfulness, there are others. Now, referencing is not going to be a concern for your year two exams, although looking at resources at another day might be useful. For the plagiarism, maybe the mindfulness, whatever, these are useful things. The library also has a list of productivity tools. And these useful resources I'm listing here are all just kind of for your self-help. There's not someone going to talk you through them. Someone has got a lot of effort into creating each of them, so they can make as well just. Okay, that's all. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Now would be a good